I request the participants to kindly put your mic off so that, so that, you have so that will not get disturbed. Thank you. Kindly keep your mic off and if you need any copy in the chat box. And if you've got any tech, contact Ms. Lakshmi, whose number and email ID is sent to you in your correspondence mail. We are indeed distinguished and much awaited resource person from the Institute of Technology in Dr. Professor at IIT Madras. Good evening. He pursued his institute's Bhagavadi, your voice is breaking. Yeah. Bhagavadi, your voice is breaking. Oh, okay. okay. So now I'm at... Not audible. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible now? Some echo issues, uh, but now it is over. Okay, sir. Try? Shall I start? Uh, now it is okay. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. We are indeed proud and blessed to have with us a most distinguished and much awaited resource person from the Indian Institute of Technology, Madras, Dr. Sabuj Kumar Mandal who is the Associate Professor at IIT Madras. He pursued his PhD in Economics from the Institute for Social and Economic Change in the University of Mysore. He is a recipient of several awards on his academic and professional journey. He has publishings in numerous journals and is a passionate researcher, owing to the best experience as a teacher and a better human being and a personality cherishing words as an orator, Dr. Sabuj Kumar Mandal shall certainly inspire us in parting the most innovative ideas into us on this eve on the topic introduction to quantitative response models in equity debt and other choice of financing demonstration by using stata. Also, he is his own force in economics tricks. On behalf of the So on behalf of the Department of Commerce, I welcome you, sir, to the session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Biju. Yeah. So many thanks for giving me this opportunity to uh, share uh, uh, some of the econometric models while estimating, uh, or I'd say while answering uh, some of the empirical questions that we that we face in financial economics, right? So, uh, to start with, uh, I have uh, I I can see that there are many participants who are actually pursuing their uh, PhD, and uh, there are uh, there are participants who have already completed their PhD and working as a faculty member and i assume all of you have some way or the other uh, related to this financial economics right now the application of econometrics in finance is very vast is huge actually so it is very difficult to cover the entire application of econometrics in finance in one or two sessions so that is why i have taken only one particular topic, which is a quantitative response uh, model, and then I would like to uh, show the application of that particular model in in finance. So uh, I would be uh, taking help from uh, Biju and the other uh, technician uh, while sharing my screen. I have some PPT. So Biju, can you please help me? Here in I am not so familiar in WebEx, 
so if i go to share so share go to share and then yeah it's visible put it on slide show mode then it will be okay just one second uh, this is view i should go to enter full screen right yeah yeah so this is uh, the qualitative response model and before i start this model from the audience i would like to get uh, some quick uh, responses how many of you uh, have not yet uh, exposed to econometrics audience can uh, use the chat chat option how many of you have no exposure to econometrics at all if i don't receive any response snehit I... snehit uh, host please uh, check the chat option is working or not yes sir i will enable it now only those yeah only those should respond who have not exposed to econometrics others who are having some kind of exposure to econometrics are coming the results are coming up sir okay okay so that means that's enough that's fair enough so that means what i can see that there are some participants uh, who has not yet got any any exposure to econometrics now the topic what i have taken it will it is little uh, advanced uh, level econometric models so what i will do i will first tell you what is econometrics before i start with this qualitative response model in not cell basically econometrics is the application of mathematical and statistical tools uh, to uh, to uh, empirically validate economic theories that's all so in economics and finance uh, you might have studied many theories for example from economics i can take the very simple economic theory which comes from the demand right where we came across a, a, a theory called law of demand which says that as price increases quantity demand falls now the question is uh, if you want to quantify for a percentage particular percentage change in price what should be the exact percentage change in quantity demand then what we need to do we need to basically apply econometric tools that will help us estimating a demand function and depending on the magnitude of that economic of the a particular coefficient of price we will come to know that what is the exact impact of a price change on quantity demand now even though this particular subject was first introduced by uh, economists in today's world what we see the application of econometrics is much wider than what initially it was so in today's world we apply econometric tools in economics in finance in marketing then even in other social science discipline as well as science and engineering disciplines as well and when we talk about finance i would say that it is actually not possible to do any empirical finance or fina empirical research in finance without understanding econometrics it's so important so there are certain steps involved in econometrics so i would just like to take you step 1 2 3 like that step 1 step 2 so what is the first step in any econometric analysis the first step would be to hypothesize some kind of relationship for example in the context of demand i was hypothesizing a relationship between price and quantity demand and what is my hypothesis my hypothesis is that as price increases then quantity demand falls so this is some kind of inverse relationship between price and quantity right 
Similarly, in the context of business and finance, you might be interested in what are the factors that might influence the profitability of a firm. And let's say you are hypothesizing that as sales, R&D and export intensity increases, the profitability of the firm also increases. So that means you are basically hypothesizing some kind of positive relationship between this independent variable with the dependent one, which is profitability in this context. Now, once you hypothesize the relationship, then our next step would be to, to basically uh, convert that hypothesis into a mathematical model. For example, if you consider X is price and Y is, uh, let's say, uh, demand, then we have to we have to express the relationship using a mathematical function y equals to alpha plus beta x kind of model, right? In this context, I'd like to give you an example. Let's say this is one model wherein I have mentioned yi equals to alpha plus beta xi plus ui. Now, this particular model here, we are calling it binary response or qualitative response model. Why this is called binary or qualitative response? Because unlike the price and quantity demand, where quantity demand is a continuous variable, it can take any value from zero to infinity. It can take any value depending on a price. The quantity demand can be one, two, three, four, 10, 100, 150, like that. But sometimes our dependent variable are binary in nature. For example, we might be interested in this type of questions. Why do some individuals own their own car while others prefer public transport? Like similarly, we may also encounter this type of problem. Why do certain individuals possess their own apartment while others prefer to stay in a rented apartment? Why do some individuals loan gets accepted very easily or approved by the bank easily while others face a lot of difficulty in their bank loan approval. In the context of finance, I would like to give you certain specific example. Let's say uh, we, are, we, are, we are trying to understand why do some firms go for external financing while others, they depend only on their internal resources. So that means in this case, we will denote the dependent variable yi and yi will take only two values. yi would be equals to one if the firm goes for external financing. And when I'm talking about external financing, I hope all of you know what is external financing. If you don't mind, can anyone from the audience help me saying what exactly you mean by external financing? Yes, anyone. If you have any idea about the financing pattern of a firm, internal versus external financing, please, please tell me your idea of external financing. Please unmute your mic and say. You can answer debt. instead of uh, writing in the chat box. Debt. Yeah. debt loan from external parties. It's lending from outside, either from the financial agency or any other form of investment from the external source. And in Thank return you. of that, you need to pay the interest or return sharing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Exactly. That is what called external financing. You might be issuing some equity. You might be issuing some bonds. You might be issuing certain other instruments to raise money from the market for which you have to either share your profit or you have to pay interest if you are issuing bond. So this is called external financing. Now, the question here is that means there are two choices here in front of the firm. The firm can either go for external financing or they can use their internal resources. And I am a person here to understand what are the firm specific factors that actually determine, determine which particular mode of financing the the firm will go for and this x this capital x is basically a vector of all those form specific factors 
it might be the riskiness of the firm it might be age of the firm it might be total assets of the firm it might be ownership of the firm it might be the industrial structure of the firm so on and so forth so that means this x basically captures this x captures many different variables that will actually explain which particular mode of financing a firm will go for similarly we can also try to understand why do certain stocks they give dividend while others they do not we may also try to understand why do certain firms they go for listing their stocks in bombay stock exchange while others keep away from it so these are in all these cases if you look at the dependent variable y is basically binary binary in 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 nature so that means either you pay dividend or not if you pay dividend then this yi will take the value one zero otherwise if your company is listed in bombay stock exchange then this will take one otherwise zero if the if your company is paying dividend then yi will take one otherwise zero so that is why this model is called binary response model this yi is the response variable and since it is taking only two values zero and one this is called binary response model right now there are basically three, three types of three types of models to handle with this type of situation and i will take you through all these three types of models in today's lecture and tomorrow or in our next class we will try to understand how to estimate those model using a data and applying the econometric software which is called stega and today's lecture is specifically on the theoretical part of these three type of model right now the first model as you can see from here this is called linear probability model now why this is called linear probability model because here we assume let us let us take you through let me take you through the model look at here i have mentioned a model yi equals to alpha plus beta xi plus ui this is the model and we assume yi equals to one if an individual is having a card zero otherwise you can take any example the model the same model will work instead of taking this example you might be thinking that yi takes the value one if a particular company is listed in bse zero otherwise and what we assume that probability pr this 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 is probability yi uh, takes the value one that is denoted by pi and this is probability yi equals to zero which is denoted by one minus pi so you can think of probably pi is basically the probability of a success success means the event is actually happening the individual is having a car we call that event as a success in the literature of probability nothing else it's very simple if the company is listed in bombay stock exchange then we will call that event as success if it is not we will say it's failure failure does not mean the company is failure uh, company's failure rather i will say that failure means it is these two terminologies are actually uh, we are borrowing from the probability literature so if you take the expected value of it you will get then how do you calculate expectation you have to multiply the values with the uh, corresponding probability so you multiply pi with 1 and 1 minus pi equals to 0 into 0 that will take you to pi so that means expected value of yi is basically the probability that the event will happen or not since the expected value of the dependent variable indicates pi that means which shows whether the event will happen or not we say this this model is linear probability model why this is called linear probability model first of all the probability part is clear because this model simply indicates uh, the what is the probability that the event will happen and since the probability is actually a linear function of this x we call it we look at this equation six where we have said that pi is basically alpha plus beta x i so that means probability that the event will happen is a linear function of x 
that is called linear probability model that is the first model econometrician they introduced to understand this type of situation now this linear probability model it has some limitation what is the limitation limitation is that if you know that probability has some specific uh, characteristics probability of happening an event must always lie between 0 and 1 probability cannot go beyond 1 and 0 okay it should always lie between 0 and 1 but the moment i introduce this probability as a linear function of x then there is a danger involved in it what is the danger the danger is suppose this is the probability of owning an individual uh, for owning a house right owning a house and this x is basically income so it says as income increases probability of owning a house is also increasing now you will agree with me that when an individual's income increases from 10,000 to 20,000 20, obviously there will be a great jump in the probability of owning a house then again 20 to 30,000 30 to 40 40 to 50 if the income increases up to certain range the probability will increase but now if you keep on increasing if you keep on increasing the income it may so happen that at one point of time your estimated probability is exceeding one because you are you are increasing your xi just like that so that means the model at that stage will not make any sense probability cannot go beyond one right so it should always lie between zero and one so that means this linear probability model the way we model it it has some severe limitation even though econometrician they introduce this model as their attempt it has several limitations because of which later on econometrician they introduce non-linear models okay so up to this i stop here up to this if you have any doubts you can quickly raise one or two doubts from the audience so that i can i can clarify or answer your doubt this is the starting point of this uh, qualitative response model quickly please ask if you have any doubt nobody have doubts i hope so okay so up to this stage nobody has any any doubt right so it has two implication actually either implication number one whatever i am saying it's very crystal clear to you number two whatever i am saying it is not making any sense to you so that so that you are able to raise any doubts i hope the implication is the first one that everything is clear not the second one right Yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. So once once we are done with this linear probability model, that means we understood it has several limitations. I am not discussing all the limitations because the time is short. So the main limitation is this linear probability model cannot restrict the estimated probability within the range of zero to one. That is the main limitation of this uh, linear probability model. Now. These are the limitations, but I am not going to discuss each of these limitations, each because that will take some time. So I will take you directly to the logic model to overcome, to overcome this limitation. Instead of hypothesizing a linear relationship between PI and the set of independent variable XI, or the econometrician they did, they hypothesized a relationship in this way: PI equals to one by 1 plus e to the power minus zi where zi equals to alpha plus beta xi right so this type of specification this 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus zi this is basically called logistic function or more appropriately the cumulative logistic distribution and that is why the name logic model nothing else 
So earlier we said PI equals to alpha plus beta XI. Here I am saying PI equals to one by one plus E to the power minus Z I. Okay, that is the, that is the, uh, that is the a specification that I am mentioning. Now, if you have pen and paper with you, you can do some mathematical uh, manipulation. So, what I am asking you to do is basically uh, divide this equation both the sides uh, by 1 by 1 minus pi, then what you will get pi by 1 minus pi. And if you do so, you will see that pi by 1 minus pi equals to e to the power minus zi. If you have pen and paper, you can quickly check actually pi by 1 minus pi is e to the power minus z i. And if you take logarithm of both the sides, then log of pi by 1 minus pi equals to alpha plus beta x i. Now this model can be estimated since it, it, it becomes a, a linear a equivalent to linear model. This was little problematic because this is a nonlinear kind of specification. By doing some simple mathematical manipulation, what we did, we basically linearized it. So log of pi by 1 minus pi equals to alpha plus beta x. Now this pi by 1 minus pi, it has some interesting implication in econometric literature. This pi by 1 minus pi is basically is known as odds ratio. Okay, odds ratio. So that means odds in favor of happening an event. Since PI is there in the numerator and PI indicates probability of happening the event, so PI by 1 minus PI is called odds ratio. And the moment I take log, it's called log odds ratio. So you have to always keep in mind while estimating a logic model that what is the specification that you are estimating. It is log PI by 1 minus PI equals to alpha plus beta xi, okay, alpha plus beta xi. Now, the point here is, if you want to estimate this equation, if you want to estimate this equation using the data that you have collected, so I will just ask you to visualize your data structure. What you have to do, let's say you want to understand why do certain individuals, they have their own uh, their own house while others they prefer to stay in rented apartment. So let us say that you are conducting a survey. You go to each and every house, every individual and ask them, is this house your own or rented one? If the individual says, yes, it is my own, then you will put one for Y. Let us say that you have created one Excel sheet where y is for the dependent and you have x1, x2, x3, x4, these are all independent variables. So in Excel sheet, you will get in y column 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, like that. So this is y column. So and in x, you have individual's income, you have individual's age, so on and so forth. Now, while estimating this model, you need PI and 1 minus PI. Can anyone tell me if you have that type of information, what I will specify here in this model? I have information on YI, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, depending on whether the individual is having his or her own house or not. Using that information, how will you estimate this model? That means here in place of PI, what should I put? PI is basically probability of owning a house. So I should write, sir, one divided by one minus not happening that event. Yes, exactly, exactly. So now the, 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 the question is, let's say you are putting PI equals to one. Okay, if you put PI equals to 1, what will happen? The left hand side will become log of 1 by 1 minus 1, 0, and 1 by 0 is infinity. So that means your dependent variable becomes log of infinity. Does it make any sense? Your dependent variable is log of infinity. Does it make any sense? Yes, sir. 
no sense to that. It does not make any sense. Now, someone else will tell me, no, no, sir, instead of one, let me put zero. What will happen? If you put zero, then this will become, become zero. zero. That zero. will become log of zero. That also does not make any sense. So that means neither one nor zero I can substitute for pi. Then the question is why? I am saying pi is probability, but then I am not able to put one and zero. What is the problem? What is the problem? Why is it happening? Because in the model itself, I have specifically mentioned that PI is the probability of happening in event. But the moment I put one and zero, then this model becomes uh, difficult to estimate because the dependent variable becoming log of zero or log of infinity. What is the problem? Do you see any problem here? Yes, there is a problem, but the problem is little difficult to understand. See, here I am saying PI is basically the probability of happening an event. What is YI? YI is basically called in, in econometric literature, it's called realization. That means we can only see whether the event has realized or not. We cannot actually visualize the probability. Probability is something you cannot observe. Do you think I can observe probability? No. I can only observe the end result, whether the event has happened or not. How can you ensure that the end result is equivalent to probability? That is not. Probability is something which you cannot observe. We can observe only whether the event has happened or not. That means we can only observe the realization. So one thing we must keep in our mind that this PI is actually not equivalent to YI. YI is the realization which we can observe. PI is the probability which we are trying to estimate. It should lie between zero and one. Okay, so the moment we put, we assume PI is equivalent to YI, the problem starts there because we have not differentiated the realization with probability. Probability is quite different from realization. We can always observe only realization, not the probability. That's why I never ever use one or zero here to estimate the model. That means given our data set, we cannot create the dependent variable for our estimation. That means we cannot use the ordinary list square technique or OLS those who have little idea of econometrics, you might have studied about ordinary list square technique, wherein you try to minimize the sum of the error square. So here that technique is not applicable because I am not able to create my dependent variable. Then the question is, if that is, that is problematic, what is the solution? Now to overcome, the solution overcome this problem econometrician they suggested a different route what they say that we need to introduce a statistical concept called likelihood function what is likelihood function likelihood function is basically related to probability distribution function uh, any one of you from the audience uh, are you familiar with probability distribution function or probability distribution, let's say binomial probability distribution, Bernoulli probability distribution. Yes, sir. There are three for distribution: Poisson, normal, and binomial. Binomial. Now, in probability distribution, what is known? The known is actually the parameters. So that means, if I know the probability distribution, and if I ask you, if I toss a coin in times, you can easily calculate the probability of getting some 10 heads or 15 heads or 20 heads like that's very simple right don't you think if i give you the probability distribution and if a coin is unbiased and i ask you if i if i toss the coin 15 times what is the probability of getting 10 heads don't you think that it is possible to calculate so Sir, it is possible yes it is very simple that is the that is the use of probability distribution function 
Now I am asking you to think it differently. Let's say I am saying you, I know how many times I am tossing the coin. I also know how many heads I have observed. Let's say head is occurring head is called success and occurring tail is called failure. So I already know how many heads has happened. That means I already know the number of success in these 15 trials. Now I am asking you, can you tell me what is the distribution? That means what should be the parameter of the distribution that will, that will give me this many number of success when n equals to, that means number of trial equals to 15. So we can use Poison distribution. No, no distribution will work in this case. I'm talking about, it's a different type of concept I'm asking you to think about. It's a okay. different concept related to probability distribution. In all this probability distribution, the parameters are known. If you take poison, binomial or not, every distribution is defined in terms of parameter, like PI, the success and N. So in probability distribution, parameters are known we can always calculate the number of success probability of this many success. Suppose the parameters are known, I know how many times I toss the coin and how many heads I got, but I don't know what is the distribution that has led to this type of situation. That means indirectly, let me say that I'm asking you to think of a situation where I have interviewed some 100 individuals, that means n equals to 100, out of those 100 individuals, let's say there are 40 individuals who have their own house. So that means 40 is the number of success. But I don't know what is the value of this alpha and beta, that means the parameter that, that will lead to this type of sampling. So that means I'm asking you, from a given population, you can actually draw n number of samples. From a given population, you can draw n number of samples. I have observed a particular sample and in that particular sample out of 100, there are 40 individuals, they have their own uh, house. If you draw another sample, maybe the number of owning a house will vary from 40 to 50 or 40 to 30, something like that. Now I am asking you, can you tell me what should be the value of alpha and beta, that means the parameters that will maximize the probability of observing a particular sample from the given population. And that is basically the idea of a likelihood function. And that is basically the idea of maximum likelihood estimation that is required to estimate a logic model. Now the idea of likelihood function and maximum likelihood function, it's not very easy to understand, but it is not very difficult also. What I am saying, you just have to think a related but opposite of probability distribution. What is known in case of probability distribution that is unknown in the context of likelihood function. Okay, parameters are known in probability distribution, which are unknown in case of in case of likelihood function. Number of success uh, probability you have to estimate you can estimate the number of uh, uh, probability of happening this many number of success in likelihood function i already know how many success has happened okay i already know okay so that means which is known here that is unknown there which is known there unknown here so that means basically in likelihood function in short i'm asking i have collected a particular sample in which out of 100 individuals, there are 40 individuals who have their own uh, house. And I'm asking you, tell me, what should be my value of alpha and beta that will maximize the probability of observing that particular sample? Okay, now, how do you do it? Basically, this is how we do it. Let's say L is the probability of observing the entire sample. Now, probability of observing the entire sample is nothing but probability of observing y1, y2, y3, dot, 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 y in. So that means we can say that by multiplicative rule, we can say that this is basically probability of y1 multiplied by y2 multiplied by y3, dot, 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 y in. Okay. 
So now, what I will do, then I'm calling it. Let's say I have n number of individuals and I have arranged my sample in such a way that first n one number of individuals will have their own house while the remaining n two number of observations or individuals, they don't have their own house while n one plus n two equals to n. So what we can say that probability y1, y2, yn, this is basically, this should be n, this is not n1, this is n. So this should be p1, p2, dot, 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 pn1, okay? After that, so that means what I said for the first n1 observations, everyone, everybody is having a vehicle or a house, that is why it is p1, p2, that means it is expressed as p. Starting from n1 plus 1th observation, we will have 1 minus p into n1 plus 1, 1 minus p into n1 plus 2, dot, 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 1 minus p n, which is very simple. Basically, I am saying p i indicates probability of success and 1 minus p i indicates probability of failure. Now, this particular statement, how will you, how will you write in compact form? This I can write i running from 1 to n1 pi multiplied by this is actually a product sign and here also another product sign wherein i am saying i running from n1 plus 1 to n and this is 1 minus pi so i am sorry that there is little difficulty in notation here it is i running from n1 plus 1 to n here it is i running from 1 to n1 and here it is pi here it is 1 minus pi that's all this i can write as again the product i running from 1 to n1 pi to the power yi into 1 minus this entire thing what i can write i running from 1 to n actually not n1 pi to the power yi into 1 minus pi to the power 1 minus yi why i am writing in this way because for the first n1 observation yi equals to 1. So if you put yi equals to 1, then this will become pi. For the remaining observation, yi takes the value 0. So 1 minus pi to the power 1 minus yi, if you put 0 here, that becomes 1 minus pi. Now why am I, why I'm writing this uh, in this way? Because if I write this in this way, and if I take logarithm of both the sides, then what I'll get log l equals to i running from 1 to n1 log of pi plus summation i running from 1 to n n1 plus this is actually i running from n1 plus 1 to n 1 minus yi into log of 1 minus pi right and here i can substitute pi for 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi that is the pi now what i have to do that means in logic model here then i have to maximize this like log like loop function with respect to the two parameters alpha and beta and when you maximize this function that particular alpha and beta for which this function is maximized i will take that alpha and beta as the estimated value so this is quite different from the ordinary list square technique that we have learned earlier, okay? So that means the likelihood function is basically the probability. So this is what I have mentioned. And in this specification, when I'm writing pi equals to one by one plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi, or in short, if I write one by one plus e to the power minus zi, that means, if zi runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, pi will always run from 0 to 1. That is the advantage of this logic model. So when zi ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity, pi will range between 0 and 1. Okay, this is basically the logic model. So that means whenever you come across a logic model to estimate a binary response type situation, Please remember that means we are estimating this one. That means we are trying to maximize log of L with respect to alpha and beta. Now you can easily understand how difficult 
this maximization problem is. Okay, how difficult this maximization problem is. But thanks to the statistical software's data, we actually don't have to maximize this manually. Rather, using some simple command, data will easily estimate these models for us. Then the question is, if it is so easy, why we are why we are uh, 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 understanding the theory behind it? We are trying to understand the theory behind this because if we don't understand the theory, then we will not appreciate what data is actually doing behind the curtain. We will also not be able to understand what what is the real flavor of econometrics. In most of the cases, we generally don't bother to read and understand the theory. We simply look at the command which is readily available in Google and then we'll try to estimate the model and that is how we do econometrics and we, we, we come up with some kind of nonsensical interpretation of the coefficient because we don't know what we actually estimating. So whenever you estimate a model, first of all, you need to understand this is our specification. Pi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus zi or Pi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi. Okay, and this is the technique maximum livelihood method wherein this is the model log L equals to this condition that is what we are trying to maximize. Since we are applying maximum likelihood method to estimate a logit model, please keep in mind that this maximum likelihood method requires minimum 200 to 300 number of observations to give you reliable estimates of your parameter alpha and beta. That's why it is not possible to estimate logit model if your number of observation is less than 100. More is the better. So whenever you are trying to apply this type of model, please ensure that you have minimum 200 to 300 observations in your hand. Your sample size should be of minimum 2 to 300, not less than that. Okay, because this requires maximum likelihood estimates. All right, so up to this logic model, again, I will give you a pause of a minute and I will ask you if you have any doubt up to this. If you have any doubt, please ask me. So we can continue, sir, no doubts. Okay, okay, okay. So if you don't have any doubts, then what we'll do in our next model, what we'll, we'll, we'll try to understand as a probit model. As I said initially, that we have three types of model, linear probability model, the logic model, and next one is a probit model, right? Now the probit model, to understand the probit model, we will take an alternative route or indirect route through which we can actually derive both uh, linear probability model, LPM, logic and probit everything, okay? Now here in probit model, we, we, we consider a latent variable Y star. Y star is called a latent variable. What is latent variable? latent variable is basically something uh, which is which we generally uh, impossible to observe but that actually plays an important role in our decision making for example while deciding about whether to buy a car or not what do we think now i answer i i want an answer for this question suppose you have some amount of income and you are thinking whether to buy a car or not. All right. So what kind of thinking goes in your mind? From the audience, please. How do you decide whether to buy a car or not? What goes on in your mind while deciding whether to buy a car or not?
this is a very simple question why the audience is so silent it's available the fund and budget that's the first question no no you have money you have some amount of money and then what you will do you will do the Suppose research your budget is allowing you to buy the vehicle do you think that you will buy it you will see that is it is it required for you and uh, you'll do a, some sort of an, a research on your side exactly that means what we do we think that if i buy the car at this level of income what is the satisfaction or utility in the language of economics we call it utility so how much utility we can derive right so if the if we if we get a positive amount of utility that means if there is a positive if there is a threshold level of utility uh, that we are deriving from the model then only we can say that this yi which actually we can observe will take the value one zero otherwise so we need to derive some amount of utility or use out of it then only will go for buying a vehicle or owning a house it's not that just because we have money we will go for it we always calculate the utility now utility is something which you cannot observe which is unobserved but that plays an important role in this decision making okay so utility is unobserved only the decision whether to buy or not that means whether you have bought it or not that means again we will observe only the realization okay so yi is the decision or the event has happened or not but yi star is only the latent one which is related to yi in this way how yi equals to 1 when the individual derives a positive amount of satisfaction zero otherwise so that means we can say that probability yi equals to 1 equals to probability yi star greater than zero right similarly what i can say that from this statement then i can indirectly say that probability yi star greater than zero when probability how how will you get this yi star it's very simple if you go back if you have to get the probability yi star greater than zero that means this negative of this should be greater than or ei should be greater than negative of alpha plus beta xi very simple mathematics if the epsilon i is greater than negative of this then only this would become positive the same condition i am applying here epsilon i is actually greater than negative of this and from this this is actually following from the definition of cumulative distribution function nothing else when probability epsilon i epsilon i is a random variable is greater than a specific value we can write this as 1 minus 1 minus actually this there should be a negative sign here f of minus of this f of minus of this 1 minus f of minus of this where so f is basically the cumulative distribution function since there is a negative sign over here this negative actually 1 minus f of negative over here that is actually equals to f of this so that means ultimately we have arrived at that probability is actually is equals to the f of alpha plus beta xi now depending on depending on which particular functional form this f of alpha plus beta xi will take we will get three types of model either lpm or logit or probit how look at this when f of alpha plus beta xi equals to alpha plus beta xi then it is a linear probability model when f of alpha plus beta xi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi we call this is a logit model and then when f of alpha plus beta xi is a normal cdf then we call a probit model that means logit and probit logit and probit they are actually same they are actually same but but the thing is we need to understand when to apply logit and when to apply probit depending on the situation as you see that logit model applies logistic cdf and probit model applies normal cdf now logit model if you look at 
logic model and this cumulative normal CDA, both of them actually they, they take the shape of a sigmoid ace. So that means an ace which will approach to, to one and zero, but they will never touch the axis. They will never touch the axis. All right. And what I say that logic model has a flatter tail. So either upward or downward, the tail is flatter in the case of logic compared to the probit. So that means in if in your sample, if you see that that too many observations are at the lower end or at the upper end. That means too many individuals are having either house or too many individuals are not having house. That means you are having too many observations at the tail. If you have too many observations at the tail, then please keep in mind, we must apply logic model. Sometimes we feel that we can apply logic or probit interchangeably depending on the choice. Actually, that is not the case. So logic and probit, how do you choose? Depending on your sample structure. If you have too many observations at the lower end or upper end, then we must apply logic. If your observations are like 40, 50, 40 60 or 50, 50, that means 50% individuals are having housed, another 50% individuals not having house, then the situation is basically a, a, a case wherein you can actually either apply logic or probit. So that means both are both logic and probit are same in the mid range. Okay, in the mid range. So I will just try to make you understand. I don't know whether I can uh, I can uh, log in through another device. Is it possible, Bijan? Sir. Uh, so uh, if I start the meeting, uh, start meeting or join the meeting, right? No. Uh, I think I have to go back and. And this is accept. This is the link. Yeah, so I think I have to start video and join. And yeah, I have to start video and Unmute and if I go to here, I just broke it. Yeah, so there is a device, right? So what I say is. Uh, this is data. Sir, I am sorry. To interrupt, there's a small disturbance in the voice. If you could mute one of your mics, it will be all right. So I think the other, the other login uh, should be muted, sir. The video should be off. Uh, so what should I do? So the video which uh, which showing the video which showing. I. I I should stop video here. Yeah. It's a whiteboard. We can see a whiteboard. Hmm. Okay. So, so what I say is that this is zero and one. So, please tell me if you are able to uh, listen to this. So the voice is feeble right now. The the older one, the voice was good. Okay, so I don't know what should I do here. Uh, anyway, I'll just draw it. Uh, now it is okay, sir. Yeah. So what, I, what I'm saying, let's say this is this is this is the logic model, and this is the probit one. Okay. So one thing from here you should understand: this is minus infinity to plus infinity. And see, this is in this axis I'm measuring z. So when z ranges from minus infinity to plus infinity, z 
this curve is actually ranging from 0 to 1 but it will never touch the axis it will be asymptotic it will never touch the axis so what i'm saying in this neat range logic is actually equal to problem logic is actually equal to problem and here when you are in the tail you see that that logic has a flatter tail so that means it can capture the it can capture the observations at the tail end better than the profit one that is what i that is why i say that if your sample structure says that your observations are in the mid range your observations are in the mid range then it is better for you to you can use any of these but when your observations are in the tail then actually you should use the logic model not the profit one okay is this fine so this is how we decide the logic to profit a different type of models and the estimation technique is uh, maximum likelihood method but one thing you have to keep in mind that one thing you have to keep in mind that uh, uh, sorry yeah so so uh, uh, how to how to determine the goodness of fit of your model okay how to determine the goodness of your fit goodness of fit of your model generally we we know that r square is the measure of goodness of fit okay but here in the context of binary response model or qualitative response model we cannot use r square because what is r square r square is basically ess by tss and that is basically coming from that is basically coming from the idea that you have a scatter plot so that means with the eraser here uh, i should get the eraser I'm sorry, I'm not able to find out the eraser here. Anyway, so what I was trying to, um, what I was uh, trying to make you understand about uh, the R square. See, R square is basically this ESS by TSS, and this is basically coming from the idea that you have a scatter plot, and then the the R square, and you are fitting a line which is which represents the average average of your uh, scatter plot. But if you in, in the context of binary response model, you see that this is one axis and this is one axis. So your observations are all lying either this axis, either zero, individual is having a curve, or here. So that means there is no scatter plot. So concept of regression line itself is different. Okay. So that means there is no average. If there is no scatter plot, if there is no average concept, there is no concept of ESS and TSS in this case. So that means the standard interpretation of R square is actually not valid when you get the qualitative response model. Then there are different con there are different alternative measures of R square that the econometrician they have uh, derived. One is called pseudo R square and another one is called count ratio. 
okay pseudo r square and count ratio so what is count ratio see basically when you devise a model and estimate the parameters alpha hat and beta hat let's say you have estimated your sorry this is i'll take pencil so let's say you have given this is your alpha hat and beta hat now using this alpha hat and beta hat you will estimate your probability pi hat what is pi hat the estimated probability that the ith individual will have a vehicle or not so the idea is first you estimate the model get your pi hat okay and the pi hat will come out let's say pi hat equals to for example i am saying pi hat equals to 0.0.7 sorry 0.76 if the estimated probability is more than more than uh, 0.50 we will we will uh, assume that this is actually pi equals to 1 that means the ir individual has actually got a vehicle now what i have to do i have to go back and see in the data set i have the original data about the ith individual i will go back and see whether the ith individual has actually owned the vehicle or not if i see yes in the original data also i see the ith individual actually has bought a vehicle i will think this is a correct prediction that means my model has correctly predicted about ith individual similarly i will go to next individual i will calculate probability if it is less than 0.50 and the individual in the original data set shows the individual is having a vehicle then i will think this is an incorrect prediction okay so i will count how many correct predictions i get from my model then i will divide that with total number of prediction which is equals to n for n number of individuals you can make only n number of predictions so if you take a ratio of correct predictions divided by total predictions that will give you r that is the idea okay so this is how this is basically the theory behind this lpm uh, in lpm of course since that is Uh, estimated by OLS, we can use standard R square. But in case of logic and probing, we cannot use uh, the standard R square. Okay, so that's the idea. Now here in logic and probing, we assume that individuals are having only two choices. So that means choice is dichotomous. Dichotomous. Either you own a vehicle or not a vehicle, not own a vehicle. Either you go for external financing or not. but sometimes the choice variable is not dichotomous rather it is a polychotomous choice within external financing i can go for debt financing i can go for equity financing so that means there are let's say three choice okay issuing issuing public uh, public uh, bond issuing uh, uh, issuing private uh, bond or let's say issuing uh, security these are the three choices or no, no not at all going for external funding that is also one choice so you have four choices okay 1 2 3 4 so that means now your dependent variable instead of binary it becomes now polychotomous that means in this case what we need to do we need to apply multinomial logic kind of model and in multinomial logic model one category will be treated as base category and then we will see compare to the base category how the other two categories probability of other two categories changes when any um, any any particular external uh, any particular independent variable is changed so that is basically the idea of multinomial logic kind of model so this is this is the idea of binary and multinomial logic model and in our next class we will take a data set we will estimate and i will show you some specific examples from the finance 
to at least make you understand how these models they actually work in empirical way. So with this, I would like to close my session today. Uh, but before that, I would like to take questions from the audience. Participants can un unmute your mic and ask questions right now. Sir, I have a question. Yeah. Sir, my question is in logit and probit model, like R square, uh, we see the R square is more closer to one, the model fit. So here, how can we interpret the model fit in uh, logit and probit model? You have said that uh, two odd, uh, Two ways. One is a photo R square. Something. Can you elaborate more on that? Uh, here, yeah. So again, this is, yeah. So what you are saying is correct. R square is always treated as goodness of fit, but instead of applying standard R square, we have to use either pseudo R square or count ratio. Depending on the value of R square, you have to say whether you have made a good fitting or bad fitting. So that means if the ratio of correct predictions over total prediction is more, then of course, obviously you will understand that you have set a good model. If that is a low, then you will see that you could not set a good model because you have made uh, only few correct predictions, right? So what the is the ratio standard? of correct predictions should be more. Sir, what is the standard value of that pseudo R square? So that is what I wanted to ask. Uh, that is, there is no standard value as such. What we need to do in econometrics, see more than the value, what we need to check is the significance of the R square itself. Okay, that means chi square value you are talking of. Not chi square value. See, the significance of R square is generally uh, generally checked by F statistic. R square and F, they have some kind of relationship. Okay. Depending on that, I will I will tell you when you uh, estimate actually the model, what is the overall significance of the model. Using that F statistic, we can actually check the significance of R square also. Because R square is... Sir, uh, say, but when we use in SPSS, uh, in logit model, uh, that uh, follows a chi-square distribution. And it shows the signi uh, significance value. I don't know about Tata. So no, 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 no. P please hold on. Whatever software you take, econometric theory will not change. Please keep in mind. And that's okay. That's Whether okay. I use it as data or SPSS or reviews, econometric theory is theory. That will never change. When I'm saying yes. the significance of R square must come from the F statistic, that means irrespective of your software it will always be determined from there because it has a logic okay what is the logic logic is that in one case you do not include any explanatory variable in the model that is called a restricted model and in another case you will include all your explanatory variable then i will see compared to that unrestricted situation what is the improvement in the explanatory power of the model when I include so many independent variables. Thereby, I will calculate two types of R square. R square restricted, R square unrestricted. Using that R square restricted and unrestricted, I will arrive at an F value and that F will give you the significance of R square. But when you are estimating this type of binary response model, please keep in mind more than R square, what is important is whether you are getting correct sign and significance of the independent variables since r square does not have the standard interpretation here that's why we don't break our head so much about r square in the context of qualitative response model is this correct is this all right hello Yes, sir, it's clear. Yeah, okay. Any other doubts, please? Uh, yeah, uh, Professor. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, may I ask a question? So you have explained uh, the three models very clearly, uh, distinguishing the three models. So my question is like, not related to the models. I have a very curious question. See, in the, all these models we are using as basic uh, tool that is used is regression. Yeah. Regression, regression analysis. Yeah. So, uh, but what is the difference between this uh, regression and econometrics? Because we say it is econometric, but we are using regression model. Throughout. Yeah. So how can we distinguish between the two? When, when, we, when can we call it econometrics and when we can we call it statistics? Okay, your question is statistics and difference between statistics and econometrics, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so econometrics is basically the application of statistical and mathematical tools. See, what is the job of a statistician? Statistician will only collect data and the statistician will only represent the data using spy chart, using histogram, this and that. Statistician and what is the job of a mathematician? Mathematician will only express economic theory in terms of a mathematical model, y equals to alpha plus beta xi. But econometrician's job is to use both statistics and mathematics and to come up something about the validity of economic, economic theory, whether the demand function what we learned is correct or not, whether the pecking order theory in finance, you might have studied pecking order theories in finance. For example, the firms will choose that mod particular mode of financing, which is less costly first, and then they will go for, after that, what is the next costly one, then ne ne next costly one like that. So likewise, the most risky firm will choose the most costliest mode of financing. Now, neither mathematician nor statistician, they will give you an answer for this because their job is only to collect data and represent it. Econometrician, their tool is regression. So regression is a tool which is borrowed from statistics. Then that will be used here to tell you whether the picking order theory is valid or not in empirical world. So that means the idea is, I, my objective is to test economic, economic theory and I am using mathematical and statistical tools. That is the way econometrics is different from both statistics and mathematics. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kevin, sir, for asking this question. Kevin, sir, was a former vice chancellor of Kerala University. Now, everyone clear that the job of uh, mathematician, statistician, and econometrician. Yeah. So everyone it's a wonderful question. Without mathematician, without statistician, my job as an econometrician, I am handicapped. But my job is quite distinct from both math mathematician and statistician. Because my objective is quite different. My objective is to test economic theory. Of course, nowadays, nowadays, instead of using only economic theory, I can test any theory, be it sociological theory, political theory, or some theory which comes from purely science discipline. Somebody is running some experiment in laboratory. Even the medical science, even in medical science, let's say, there is a treatment called stenting. If you have any problem in your stomach due to uh, uh, due to some uh, uh, some ab obstruction, you are not able to have food. Then they will implement some kind of stenting. And what is the success of that medical device? Okay, let's say the 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 the, the uh, uh, physician or the doctor wants to understand what explains the success of this particular method, then they will collect the individual specific data, patient specific data, what is the age, what is the sex, what is the uh, medical history, so on and so forth. And then they will apply the same model, this qualitative response model, success or failure, that will be regressed on several patient specific features so that the doctor can understand, oh, that means these are the factors that can explain the success of a medical device. That is why econometric tool is so powerful today. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
So, uh, can we? Uh, so, any more questions from the participants? I want to request with you that when situation becomes normal, please invite me to your university so that I can enjoy actually this face-to-face -face interaction yeah. and teaching. Teaching sure. is not at all enjoyable in this mode. This is not teaching. I, I have I have discussed with the IQAC director uh, for this uh, course, uh, running of course. Yeah. The collaboration. So with this you. is this way. I am very handicapped. For example, I want to write something. Now I am searching. Where is that? I am searching eraser, I am searching pen, pencil. Now this is, this way it is becoming very difficult for me. So given a black board, uh, chalk and basically I am a chalk and talk method person. So I will simply go to the board and derive many things. And then I will show you the estimation. Uh, then I will directly interact with the participants over a cup of tea. Uh, for example, last year I went to St. Joseph's College uh, I don't know whether you are aware of that college. Cochin. Cochin. Uh, Cochin, yeah. So I interacted with them, uh, with the audience. So it was a very nice uh, experience uh, interacting with the participants in St. Joseph's College, Cochin. Definitely we can have an offline, offline session. Yeah. With you. yeah. So there is no alternative of this offline uh, teaching. But anyway, as long as the situation continues, we should not stop our learning also. Some way or the other. We should learn because our understanding, teaching, learning, research should not stop because of COVID-19. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have the uh, next best alternative. Yes. Yes. So we have a lecture on uh, logic probability and linear probability models. Uh, it was uh, as simple as uh, because uh, <laughs> this is the first experience in which I am getting this kind of information in a simple way. So it's a simple way uh, suppose are presented all these things. Uh, we know the logic profit models have wide applications in finance. But prediction, prediction of financial health of a company uh, and uh, this is widely used for prediction of bankruptcy. So prediction of loan defaults uh, using credit card scoring models. Then defaulters of credit so, so many applications. Uh, it's in advanced form is neural network model, prediction of credit rating transactions, prediction of defaults. So, many areas in which we can have applications in logic probit models. So, hope the next uh, section of Sabu's uh, explain uh, which are the areas of finance in which we can use this model. So, hope the participants have good idea about uh, the situations uh, and uh, the models usage usage of these models in uh, different situations uh, okay thank you so much sir on behalf of the department i extend my thank uh, thanks for you uh, for this wonderful session and over to you host uh, host you can have formal formal word of thanks bhagavati are you there Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful session. A word or two can't describe our veneration to you, sir. You proved yourself to be a good teacher to us. With your patience to facilitate a two-way communication throughout the session. Most of us are new to this field of study, but your way of presentation was as simple and clear to us. You cherished each second by adding colors in the yard of econometrics. We are lucky to have you today, sir. On behalf of Department of Commerce, University of Kerala, I extend my sincere gratitude to you. Thank you so much, sir. I also express my sincere thanks to invite me for this session and uh, giving me an opportunity to interact with you. Uh, and many thanks to you for giving me this opportunity once again. Okay. And I am looking forward to the next session where I will be giving you the yeah. hands-on demonstration. On so that, that is the last session of our workshop, sir. 31st. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So okay. that session is also from 6 to 8, right? Uh, same, yeah. same time, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay, so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's an end today's session. Meet you tomorrow at 6 p.m. There's a feedback form which is...
remind you at the end of the session please do complete it thank you all of you yes thank you